We'll start this off with a small one and a shish kebab stoning. Thought about taking it off and I said, eh, we'll just leave it on. There it is. Got him right in the head and you see him, he's starting to turn white. Now the fish I'm killing are in Florida, off of Boynton Beach. And these fish need to be culled because they are extremely, extremely, extremely invasive. See the white coloration? That means I hit him right in the head and he's completely dead. Now we go ahead and put him in the zookeeper. This is a big plastic tube that I keep the lionfish. And this allows them to be carefully collected because the lionfish happens to have 13 or 14 venomous spines on their back and then they have a couple more end up with about 18 spines i believe look at all these pork fish wow. different types of grunts and snappers and all these huge barrel shaped things all over boom those are all barrel sponges and they are very common here and you see along the ground that's not dead coral that's actually rock with a bunch of sponge and soft corals there goes a blue angelfish Take this big boy out. Boom. Oh, he got away. See him get underneath that rock? Let's see if I can get him. I speared him, and then I come back to get a better position and wiggle him free because he was down deep inside of that crevice. Now, this fish in this area, because they are invasive, they don't have any predators, so what do we have to do? We have to be the predator. And also, bull shark. Look at him go. This bull shark was really cool because he has a banner, if you'll see. I'll show you what I mean. On the top of his fin, he's got one of these remoras stuck right to the tip of his dorsal fin. And it looks really hilarious. He's got his little remora banner from the tip of his fin. Uh, remoras and cobias and different types of pilot fishes and different different fish in general will cruise along with the bull shark. They they use them as a companion. Uh, the remora doesn't have an air bladder in its body to regulate its its uh, you know if, if it stops swimming it just kind of falls to the bottom because it doesn't have an air bladder to keep it afloat. So it sucks on and clings on to the top of larger objects, even divers sometimes. And it just kind of catches a ride, and it hopes that it will get some food from the remainder of what the, the shark eats. So if the shark tears something up and eats something, then it comes in and grabs the little pieces. Mm. There we go, there's a little nurse shark. Nurse sharks are one of the only sharks, first of all, that can touch the end of their tail with their nose. They can bend all the way around, so don't try to grab them on the tail or do anything like that, because they will bend all the way over and grab your arm can be very bad because once they bite they don't let go uh, but they don't ever bother you unless you were to do something like, stupid like that the nurse shark also uh, can just lay there there's similar sharks like the zebra shark on the other side of the world and the tawny nurse shark and uh, they can just lay on the bottom same thing with the white tip reef shark they can lay there all day and sleep whereas a lot of other sharks need to keep moving through the water in order to get oxygen flowing through their gills and so they can breathe, otherwise they'll end up you know, losing, you know, passing out and dying if they don't get any you know, oxygen going over their gills. Look at how many fish are in this area, it's so pretty. On the hunt, a lot of times in the ocean, you know, we're gonna be looking around for five or 10 minutes and we don't see a lionfish. Um, most of the time we find we find them quicker than that but there are times when we're looking around and we're thinking wow we did a good job because we can't find any there's one boom now this is the long version of the video we're going to use this version on youtube i uh want to try to get my youtube to be popping off a little bit more I missed that guy and had to go try to retrieve him as well. YouTube is really cool because people can sit down and watch longer videos. And uh, right other social media doesn't allow you to do 23 minute videos like this one here. But people have been asking, hey, can you do a really long video so I can just kind of 
pretend like I'm on that dive with you and just enjoy it and kind of see what you're seeing down there. And this is, this is it. This is what I'm doing right here. We'll do more videos like this. So we go out to the deeper areas where you see there's big stretches of sand in between reef pieces, and little, little islands is what we like to call them, underwater islands. And on each one of these rocks where sand hasn't been over top of it for a long time, you'll have quite a bit of life and growth and sponges and soft corals, and sometimes even hard corals. But most of our hard corals, uh, ever since the Industrial Revolution, in the past 30, 40 years especially, have gotten killed just from the chemicals we're using to grow food and to, you know, we dump out a lot of our toxic waste and things like that into the ocean. Hey, look at that. I got a bonus can. Sometimes I'll be, I'll shoot and coming out of the sand will be a can or some sort of garbage or plastic. That's how much, you know, it's really not a whole lot of that stuff down there, but when we find it, we try to remove it as much as possible. On the other hand, Here's a sock puppet. Look at how cute. Little bashful guy. I'm a little cautious around the oh, green eels because sometimes you'll come up, oh, little red grouper. Missed him, let's try it again. Got it that time. Look at how small he is. My thumb in comparison to him is about the length of my thumb. So that's, we, we get a lot of small fish a lot of times. People say, why don't you get the small ones? Where are the small ones? We do get them, but I don't tend to record it very often because it's difficult to do. So I'm putting all my focus into killing the fish. And a lot of times we don't get them. So what you're doing is you're kind of training the small, tiny fish to, you know, be afraid. Boom. I love doing the javelin. Cruise along and I just, you know, I feel like you're a Spartan going through the water. In order to be accurate and to not scare the fish when you're doing that though, it's good to have the pull spear already in position for the shot. So you want to pull it up and get it ready and then hover over the fish before you get there and just you have it to where they don't suspect anything actually is going to be projecting towards them. Also you want to shoot them when they're not looking at you. It's usually above their head or something like that. Look at this nice red grouper. Red groupers like this one actually help me to point out lionfish. They're so curious that if I am hunting a lionfish and I miss, it'll go into a hole and then the red grouper oftentimes goes over and looks in the hole and shows me where it is. He's just so curious, he, he wants to see what's going on and he gets the idea of what I'm doing. He literally looks in the hole and says, hey, he's, he's over here in this hole. And he's accurate almost every time he comes over and looks in the hole and sure enough, the lionfish is in there. And he's not afraid of me. That's that's the thing. That's why a lot of people that shoot red grouper for food, it's it's really just, there's no sport in it whatsoever. I guess if you're trying to eat, you know, whatever, but look at that cute little sock puppet. That's a spotted moray eel, kind of poking out of the hole. There we go. And I now see the lionfish is pretty strong. It pulls my arm around. Uh, if, if it's not, you know, dead, you see I got him through the gill plate. So they, they, can, they can pull hard enough to come off of the spear very easily. So you have to kind of, you know, judge it and see how it's going. See, that lionfish was down along the ground, but you didn't even see him. I dropped the spear. And look at, he's half paralyzed there. He got stoned, so you see him turned white again. container can hold up to 20 pounds. It's the largest zookeeper. It's a brand called Zookeeper. Made primarily for holding lionfish. You see those big venomous spines sticking up. Those things can cause some of the most excruciating pain that you'll ever go through in your entire life. And you will never want to get poked again once you've been hit, I guarantee it. So I haven't been poked for a few years because I've been very careful ever since the poking. See how it's just a bunch of sand right there. Nothing that spectacular. Look at all these guys. Found a little cluster of them. And the big boy. Actually, that's kind of a small one. It's tough to tell sizes. Oh, look at that rock beauty. 
And there's our friend, the red grouper again. I think I, they, mm. that's what he's doing. See the big smoke in the corner there, all the stirred up bottom. The red grouper is pointing out where it is. See, he's inside the hole. He says, he's in here, dude. That's pretty amazing. There's some amberjack. It's nice to see those larger predators occasionally. Now those might be lesser amberjack, or they might be just a smaller amberjack, I'm not sure. All those snappers and grunts. And air ball. Totally missed. There goes the grouper again. See, he's following the lionfish, and there he goes. He's going to go into this hole. Oh my gosh, he's on to me for sure. This lionfish knows that what I'm up to. And the chase begins. I'm trying desperately. This guy just keeps up. With, oh, I ended up going to Deco about five or six minutes trying to get that guy. I ended up getting him, but it was such a fiasco. Oh. That's how I like it. Much easier. That's a pretty good size one. You see me push him in through the hole. Boom, there's another one. And that was a tiny one. <laughs> that one was about two inches. Our trigger fish friends. So that, that little guy, see, he actually came back out of the container, so I had to stab him again. He's so small, he could slip right out the top. Another tiny one. Look at how small. The actual uh, tines, those big metal spikes on the spear that, that stabbed the fish, those are about 10 inches, so... If you look at the size of that fish on there, he's under two inches. There's our little bull shark friend again. And look at this beautiful sea of pork fish. That guy also, uh, I, I, I hit him in the head and stoned him. So he was just floating through the water once I hit him, he was knocked out. And I just went back and picked him up. Little spiny lobster there on the side. This It's always fun to see. Nice little mixed group. And here's another. Moray, hanging out with his little friends. These little fish like to peck and clean and, you know, get into the gills and take care of all the little parasites that are on the morays. They're totally happy to let it happen. They'll open their mouth up even and let these little cleaner fish get in there and clean up their, you know, the remainder of food from their teeth or just keep the parasites away. big cluster of sponge, it's so pretty. This water was really clear. It was probably 70 or 80 foot of visibility, so you see very little particulate in the water. And with the aid of having really low current, it was just a nice, easy day to film. At the end of the day, actually I got quite a bit more current. I think that lionfish is completely blind, by the way. It's both of his eyes were foggy. So I think I leave him till later. Yeah, I gotta go for the other ones first. And that was the one that was blind. He slowly crept into that hole. Yeah. I'm hoping one day that Mother Nature goes ahead and, you know, just naturally comes up with a way to blind these fish, maybe from too much inbreeding or something like that, and more of, more of them become incapable of feeding, uh, so that maybe in the future, oh, look at that, really close, over to the, the right-hand side of the screen, there was this great 
beautiful, colorful little tiny fish called a juvenile blue angelfish. If you saw that bright colored little guy, maybe rewind it and take another look. They're the prettiest, but my GoPro can't record things that are that small very well. You can see them, but I'm not going to be able to get some macro photography with a GoPro. Found another little guy. Here we are. So, as you can see, we got a lot of lionfish that were tiny. Just itty bitty lionfish that day. We're going to get all the lionfish because they all need to go regardless. Another small one. And that one, actually, I was on my way up to end the dive, and I saw one more lionfish. So you see right now, I'm going up slowly to the surface after I speared it. I shot it, and then I just started sending. So here's the next dive. This big one just hanging in the current. I didn't get him very well, so you can see he's kicking around. So it seems like it's really mean to kill fish, right? And I don't kill any other fish. This is the only oh. fish in the ocean that I kill and target. And if it weren't here, invasive in Florida, then I wouldn't be killing it at all. In fact, when we go to other places in the world, like Fiji and the Philippines and the Maldives, where these fish are native, we do not kill them, of course. We let them be because that's where they live and they are in touch with nature and they, they are part of the ecosystem but here uh, they are the number one predator in florida even more than any other predator because they are so invasive watch this parrot fish so beautiful look at the colors it's just so cool so you know that's why we kill them here because if we don't do it then no one's going to do it here we go another javelin And he is definitely stoned. See how his mouth is open? He's been knocked out. So we are saving, if we kill 100 fish in a day, in the lifetime of those fish, that 100 fish, they would have eaten 5 million fish on the smallest estimate. Probably a lot more than that. So in the 15 years they live, those 100 fish, not only would they breed like crazy, and they would lay millions and millions more eggs, all the females. But on top of that, you know, besides all that, they would eat 5 million fish in their lifetime total between 100 fish. So every day that we go out and we get 100 fish, we are greatly reducing the amount of carnage that's going down on our reefs. Because these, these lionfish, they will eat up to 90% of their body weight every day. And when you don't have a predator to stop that, it is a terrible problem for the ecosystem. In fact, this is one of the biggest issues in our ecosystem, aside from our just straight polluting everything. There's a big one. Now you see, I said that 10 inches on the spikes, that lionfish was well, well bigger than the spikes. And we got a cute little squirrel fish here. might have been the biggest one of the day it's not that big though because we used to get 16 inch lionfish on the regular but now that we've killed so many of these fish we rarely ever see one i haven't caught a, i haven't caught a 16 inch lionfish in this part of the ocean for a long time it's been a long long time so there i am going up between another dive you can see top to bottom visibility that's what i'm trying to indicate here to the bottom. Here we go for the next dive. This is the final dive of three dives. See, I'm catching them while they're swimming, which is, you know, some people find it hard to do to hit them directly in the head, but the more practice you have, the better you get. And we take all these fish and we will go off to a restaurant in Delray Beach called Lionfish, and we will sell them and recover some of the money that it costs to dive. We don't really make any money doing it, um, and it's really helpful to have donations from people so we can recover, you know, even more money, uh, so we can go out more often and do this more often and go to different places and 
go around the world to do it, actually. We've been to Honduras and Dominica, different islands and uh, countries out there in the Caribbean. And we've hunted them. See, I did that little wiggle there. I was trying to distract the lionfish so I could hit him. We go out and get the lionfish uh, in other countries, too. So we're making efforts to save not only our oceans in Florida from the lionfish, but we go all over the world and try to get them where they're not wanted. Look at this hog. Now this is what you call a hogfish. It's part of the wrasse family. People call them snappers, but it's not. Look at the the bulge in the belly of this red grouper. Mm. You can tell that it, either it has a big egg sac or something, or maybe it is a huge fish that it just ate. I'm thinking huge fish because of the shape of that belly. But he's really cute. Look at this. She probably, I don't know. Oh, little baby. Red groupers are the most docile, sweet creatures. Oh my gosh. They're just so silly. Sometimes I'll take a lionfish and chop it into pieces and cut off the spines. They don't want to eat a whole one because they know that it pokes them. So if they see it as not a lionfish, then they'll eat it. And look at this file fish. Huge, beautiful file fish. And you see those little white things on the end of its tail. Those are actually like razors. So they're very sharp and they use them to defend themselves. And this lionfish was especially pretty. When, the, when I go out of the screen there, a little bit is what I'm doing is I'm loading the spear and uh, he got away from me again. I just loaded it again. I got away and missed him again. Once they're on to you, they can dodge that spear like, you know, eventually I usually get them, but they're, they can really dodge that spear. It's pretty impressive, their skills in dodging. So there I am loading the spear up again. So obviously I must have seen a lionfish. Yep, there's one. So this is just my lionfish slaying from the day. Alex, our other diver, he also goes down and gets tons, but he rarely records them. So this is uh, just me doing all the recording, but he does a great deal of help for us. Excuse the barking if you heard it. I am not under the water talking about this. This is me narrating from my house. So that's why you might've heard a dog in the background, my wiener dog. He's a crazy protector dog. Look at that bull shark again. Always looming about. Kind of curious to see what I'm up to. The bull sharks are completely friendly. They, they just they just kind of want to... They're, they're curious. They would like to steal a fish from me if it was a big, delicious fish. But they see it's a lionfish and they're like, hmm, I think I'm going to pass. That kind of hurts my face too much. Big old gray angelfish. This is Lionfish Extermination Corp. Thanking you for coming along with us, guys. Later.